Welcome everybody to our now traditional game of stick or twist with my preseason predictions. We do this each and every international break, which gives us a lovely little guide as to how I was feeling all the way through the season. Imagine that, saying something about football and actually holding yourself to account about it. We have new information since we last did this. A block of five games has taken place and the top six teams in that block were Sheffield United, Burnley, Norwich, Plymouth, Hull and Leeds. The worst six teams in that block of fixture. Millwall, Stoke, Coventry, Cardiff, QPR and Portsmouth. By way of reference, this is what I said in the last international break. Don't worry. I mean, you can pause the screen right now and take a look at that, but we will pay regular reference to that throughout the video as we work through from bottom to top, 1 to 24, 24 to 1, whichever way you want to look at it. And we start with Portsmouth. And you can see a steady trend down in my feelings about Portsmouth. Pre-season, I did have them going down, but as the best of the three relegated teams, been a horrible, horrible start for Pompey. They're still without a win. Last international break, I had 23rd. And this one, I've gone all in, right down to the bottom. Pompey in 24th. In 23rd, Cardiff. Chaos at Cardiff because we have had a managerial change. And at time of recording, um, there has been no replacement for Errol Ballou. I had them pretty low to begin with in 17th. Dropped them to 20th in a survival position last time round in September. But I'm going to stick them into the bottom three right now. And we'll see what becomes in the next block of fixtures and who the new manager is, for goodness sake. They are currently bottom of the championship. In 22nd, I've gone for Oxford. And I get what the immediate reaction will be from Oxford fans. Oh, Ben! Stop it. We're not going to go down. That may well be true, but I have to be very careful here and I have to play the long game. So at the start of the season, I had Oxford 24th. They started really, really well and they've been pretty decent through the last block of five, even if there is a little regression to the mean. So I bumped them up to 22nd. Am I ready yet to take them out of the relegation zone? No, I'm not. I've got to play the long game and there are other teams that I don't feel ready to put in to the relegation zone. So I'm just going to leave Oxford right there with the giant caveat. If they continue kind of doing what they're doing, I mean, not to the extent of winning all the home games like they started off doing, um, they will obviously move out. I'm not ready just yet. I hope that makes sense, Oxford fans, and I have been dead impressed with the start that has Oxford currently in 10th. <laughs> Plymouth. And that's one of the reasons why I can't um, take Oxford out yet, because Plymouth, I am all over the place. I started off being one of the few people actually having them to survive, look, in 20th. Then, obviously, there was that horrific first game, and not a great start, was it? So I dropped them to bottom. I went with the crowd. But since then, been very good at home um, under Wayne Rooney. We've got to mention him when it comes to Plymouth, haven't we? And it looks like the team is now starting to be shaped in his fashion and new players are having an impact. So I am taking them out of the relegation zone. I wonder if I'm just going to go in, out, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. I can't have them going down at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, well, it's good news if you're a Plymouth fan, um, hoping for that to be the case. So I... I'm going to put Plymouth in 21st. I realise I'm flip-flopping. They're currently 14th in the table, though. In 20th, I've got Derby. And for once, I'm being fairly consistent. Well, fairly consistent with Portsmouth, wasn't I? But Derby, I've gone 21st, 21st, 20th. So I've just bumped them up one on the basis of two things, Pride Park and set pieces. If those things maintain, Derby will not get relegated. But I still think they're going to be fairly close to the line, especially given their away form. Uh, currently 12th in the table, though, so uh, well above where I've ultimately got them finishing. 19th, I've got Preston. And look, we 
had to throw a grenade in on Preston, didn't we, within one game after Ryan Lowe went out. So I went 13th to 18th. I've dropped them down one more. Um, obviously, we're struggling for data, aren't we, on Preston? Because we've got, you know, I think um, a few of the games with one manager, a, a few of the games with a caretaker, a few of the games with a new manager. The underlying numbers are not good. So I've dropped them down one. But that could fix if we think Paul Heckenbottom is as good as some people think he is. Um, 18th, <laughs> Stoke. And yeah, it's the chaos matrix again. I'd gone steady on Stoke, 14th and then 14th again. But then obviously, probably the most shocking sacking of the season was Stephen Schumacher going out. So I just dropped them down four places. Obviously, if Narcis Pelak gets them going, up they will go in the table and up they will go in my projections. Um, so I've currently got them one place below where they are in the table. I've got them finishing 18th. They are 17th as things stand. And QPR are probably my biggest disappointment here, aren't they? And what I've learned by doing this is I often stay firm through the first couple and give people a chance um, through international break one, the first couple of months I'm talking about. But I have to move on QPR now because they've been way, way worse than everybody expected, haven't they? They are 22nd in the league. I started at 11th. I kept them at 11th last time, but it's a big drop. I've dropped them to 17th. I do think Sifuentes is good and things will change. But if they don't, I've got to be ready for this and take evasive action. I didn't last time. I am this time. Let's drop QPR to 17th. And Blackburn. We're having fun and games with Blackburn, aren't we? Because I had Blackburn in 23rd getting relegated at the start of the season on the basis of um, ownership. Questionable. Always. Benkies. Um, and the fact they had the top scorer in the league trended downwards and then sold him. That obviously got blown up in the first block of games, didn't it? Because they were fantastic, Blackburn. Little drop off recently. Um, so I bumped them up big style, six places. I'm not going to bump them up massively again this time. I'm just going to be a bit cautious here and maybe we'll meet in the middle as the season goes on if the start is going to be hotter than the rest of the season, which I expect it will. So even though Blackburn are eighth in the table, I'm only going to bump them up one to 16th. And um, yeah, maybe maybe we'll meet exactly halfway between that at 12th at some point. But you never know. John Eustace, good manager. They could um, recapture that first block of games. But as of right now, I've got Blackburn finishing in 16th. Uh, Millwall, I'm fairly consistent. Um, 16th, 15th, 15th um, I've gone for. They are 18th in the table. Uh, they're, they're not winning games, are they? But they're actually making a lot of chances and not taking them. So I'm going to stick with 15th right now on the basis that that might write itself and they'll get the wins that perhaps the underlying numbers suggest. 14th, Swansea is one of the ones I've been most impressed with in the last block. I was looking for something from Swansea. I had them 19th pre-season, 19th in September. And I've seen what I'm looking for. Um, some development forward. Um, sometimes I think Luke Williams is too honest. But I know exactly what he's trying to do. And we have seen it on the pitch now. Um, they're 11th in the table. So I'm bumping them up five in to 14th. And um, I kind of like where they're going. So big thumbs up for Swansea in the last block. And probably a big thumbs down, I'm afraid, for Bristol City. Who were my pre-season gamble. I always try and throw something into the league table in the 1-24s to in the pre-season calls because it can get very boring. You just judge it by money and data and all of those sorts of things. There's got to be a surprise. So I have Bristol City in seventh. But <laughs> look, I dropped them down three for September. I'm dropping them down three again. And they're actually three places lower. So the trend is downwards on all counts. I like Liam Manning. I like Bristol City. But um, my gamble is not paying off at the moment. So they enter the bottom half. Into the top half, and Watford are a climber, and they're the reverse of um, Bristol City. Look, I said 18th, start of the season. I moved them up to 16th. I've gone up four places this time in 12th because they are just far more consistent than I thought they would be, and they're very good at home, aren't they, Watford as well? They're sixth in the table. Again, I'm, I've got a similar vibe to Blackburn, where maybe we'll meet in the middle at, at ninth, but certainly better than... Um, I expected, and that's acknowledged by me lumping them up four spots from the last round of predictions. 
wow, Luton is one we've all got to adjust on, isn't it? And I did go fairly big last time. I dropped Luton from third to eighth. I've gone down another three to 11th. I'm not prepared to go any further yet, even though they're 21st in the table. Surely it's going to right itself, isn't it? Luton, such a competent club. U1 parachute team now, ex-Premier League squad. Not going to stay down in 21st, are they? Well, I don't think they are, so I'll stick with 11th. But if things continue, um, then my prediction will get closer to the number where they are now. But I do see things um, coming around for Luton at some point. But it's a big adjustment from my initial third. In 10, Sheffield Wednesday. I've done a bit of a flip-flop because I went 10th. Then 12th in September, and I'm going 10th again now. I've just kind of gone back to where I started because I thought they were going to be good and in the top half and in the top 10 indeed. But a bit of a bad wobble after that amazing first win on opening day. What we have seen is Danny Roll knows how to solve a problem and they're back at it now. So I'm not prepared to go any higher than that, but I'll go back to where I originally had Wednesday in 10th. They are five places below that in the table right now. In ninth, Hull, and yeah, I think my hodgepodgey all over the place predictions for Hull kind of reflect Tim Volta and the season so far. I said eighth, just outside the playoffs on, you know, it's just a complete random guess when you, the manager's never been here before and we knew there was going to be a big squad churn. But we know Mr. Illichali is pretty ambitious and we thought the squad churn would leave a good squad, if that makes sense. Um, really didn't like the first few games. I don't think anybody did. So down to 13th. I put them back up in to 9th now. I know they're 13th in the table, but they're open as anything. But what I am seeing from Hull is I think they'll get a few easy wins against the teams that are in the bottom half of the table. I don't. Th I think they'll be too open for the top six teams, but um, that kind of pitches them about 9th for me. And we'll... We'll see if they can be more consistent than I'm, I'm imagining they're going to be. Eighth, Coventry. I was stubborn, stubborn. I've got to move now on Coventry because they're bloody 20th in the table, aren't they? Um, I still think they'll be way higher than 20th. I had them in fourth pre-season. I was like, no, I'm holding in September, but the results haven't improved at all, um, have they? I know they did, did get one win, didn't they? Um, but then um, immediately back to losing ways in the, in the last minute against Sheffield Wednesday in the round before the international break. I still think it'll come around to some extent, but I can't have my initial um, fourth place um, being my prediction whilst they're in 20th, can I? So let's drop Coventry into eighth. And here's a climber, climber, climber. I couldn't quite get Norwich into the top six yet, but honestly, I wanted to. It's kind of on the basis that I don't really dare take other teams out of the top six. Norwich are seventh in the table, so I've now got them finishing seventh. Um, we didn't know what Johannes Hoff Torup was going to do until we saw the football. And particularly the last block of games has been really good. So I've gone from 12th to 9th to 7th. And let's be honest, if we see some kind of slippage from the other teams I'm about to talk about, I've got Norwich finishing in, in the playoffs. I like where they're going as of right now. And in those playoffs, I finally lifted Sunderland in. Pre-season, I said 15th. Had to go massively up on the basis of that incredible start. And I'm putting them into the playoffs now. I'm not going any further. I'm not going top four yet. I know Sunderland are first in the table. But there is still that sense of hot start, regression to the mean. Other more powerful teams will take over. I'll keep jumping them up and up and we'll, 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 meet, we'll meet where we're going to meet at the end of the season. But yeah, I still think um, there's some regression to the mean to come. But I've got to put Sunderland in the playoff spots right now, even though they are top of the championship table. West Brom, um, they are currently fourth. I've got them finishing fifth. Um, Pre-season, ninth. And then Corberon just showed us immediately. Don't doubt him. Doesn't matter what's going on. He's going to deliver because he's a superb manager at championship level. I'm going to stick with fifth. And that's pretty much where they were for the majority of last season. So I'm kind of just going with what I know. Could be higher. Don't really see it being lower. 
So let's just hold fire on West Brom and I'll leave them in fifth on the basis of an excellent manager in that fellows major axis attacking. Right, I'll get some blowback for this, but hear me out on Middlesbrough because I've put them up two places and everybody's going to say, why the hell are you doing that, Ben? They're ninth in the table. The reason why, and I've gone fifth, sixth, fourth now, so it's the highest I've had them all season, is, and it is purely data, it's underlying numbers that say if Middlesbrough keep doing what they're doing, then they're probably going to go on a winning run at some point. Or they're not. And their strikers are going to continue being hapless and Michael Carrick's going to get the sack, right? But I think the former is more likely that I think all the processes, and sorry I'm using all these blooming David Brent, um, Ron Manager, modern buzzwords, but I think all the processes and all the kind of underlying um, figures that we're being hit with. I even saw one that had them top of the table in terms of, you know, um, XG4 and XG against. Don't get triggered by those numbers. It is just a metric. Use whatever metric you like to predict the future. But I think it looks positive and I think there's going to be a trend up into fourth place. So there you go. I'm sure I'll get lots of comments on that, but that's my rationale and we are predicting the future and you can't do it. I can't do it, but we can try our best. And in third place, I've dropped them out of the top two. I've been fairly consistent on Burnley finishing in the automatic positions. I just dropped them down one. They are third in the table as things stand. Obviously, I don't have Sunderland in the in the top two. I think you can probably um, guess by process of deduction who's in there. I think Burnley are going to have a really good season. I think they're going to score a lot of points, but... Um, the information I've got at the moment says they're probably at the peak of their peak of their powers. So I've got to drop them into second. Obviously, they could improve, and you know it looks like they've been on the on the right side of a of a few games, and a, a few shots have flown in in a manner that won't necessarily continue. You'd think over a forty six game block. So I'll just drop Burnley out now, but I'm fairly consistent there, second, second, third, and they are indeed third in the table right now. And that really is to accommodate Sheffield United, who um, are the real league leaders if you take out their minus two point deduction. So on points per game, Sheffield United are the best team in the championship over this first block of nine games. I wasn't sure what would happen, really. Was Chris Wilder going to be back at it? Uh, was Prince Abdullah going to sell? Were they going to manage to get through the transfer window without losing, say, Ahmed Hodzic and um, Gus Harmer, particularly those two cheat code players. Um, and it's all kind of worked out in the right way. Chris Wilder looks good. The cheat code players are still there. There's no massive chaos ownership-wise. And they haven't lost the game. And they've kept six clean sheets on the trot. Um, big up Michael Cooper in goal, who was a fine nemesis of Ipswich's in League One when he was playing for Plymouth. Let me just say I know all about Michael Cooper. Um, so I'm going to put Sheffield United in to second spot with the caveat that um, they don't get key injuries. I know you could say that about um, any squad and that Chris Wilder is truly back. If he is, he is a force of nature in that Sheffield United dugout. So I've still got Leeds top. I had them top pre-season, top in September, top in October. I get it. They're fifth. But I think I've seen enough in terms of... Um, uh, and I know whilst Leeds are not in the top two, questions will be asked of Daniel Farker. I, I get it. I get it because the expectation of that club in this division is that they will be in the top two. And really the expectation for that manager, having won the league twice before and scored 90 points last season, is that he will be in the top two. I think there's enough on the data that says there's positive stuff happening and... I don't want to, I never want to make excuses for teams. I wouldn't even do that for my team, Ipswich. But there's plenty of mitigating factors to say that the, what is it, three or four points that would have put them top. You can find those points in, you know, a game against Pompey that was crazy that Leeds should have won. For God's sake, Melier throwing in the equaliser is another two points in the, um, in the uh, previous game against Sunderland. So you can probably find four points there and then. Um, obviously, very worrying central midfield. That could change my mind. 
if there's a long period without Griff and Ampadu and the central midfield area starts to struggle and gets targeted. But Rothwell, Tanaka, okay, might be a step down. It might not be the first choice, but the quality is still high, which means I'm not going to budge. And I tend not to when we get right to the top of the league. So I'm going to stick with Leeds up at the top. There you go. Here is what that looks like, ladies and gentlemen. I have held firm on Oxford, and I'd love to change. Um, keep it going, and I will definitely move them out of the relegation zone. Uh, Millwall, West Brom, and Leeds. I have blinked slightly on Burnley, not massively. I have to on Coventry now after the bad start. They're down four. I have to on Luton as well. Bristol City was my gamble. I have to blink on QPR and there's chaos at Stoke with a managerial change. Preston a little slide down. Pompey a little slide down. Manager out at Cardiff. I've, hopefully that's my logic explained. And there are my risers. We'll work the way up from the bottom. Plymouth have shown us something that we hadn't seen in the first two blocks. Fine. Derby, I've gone a little one up. Blackburn have gone a little one up. And again, Rovers fans will meet in the middle um, if... The form continues. Swansea and Watford, um, I didn't go big on in the first international break, but I have to acknowledge the um, improvement above my expectations. Wednesday, um, I don't think that should say plus three. I think that might should say plus two, but there you go. I've gone back to 10th. Hull, um, Norwich, Sunderland, Borough and Sheffield United all just notching up a couple of places in my list. There you go. Have your say in the comments on the latest updated 1 to 24. But please, 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 please keep calm, okay? It's just some predictions. It's a conversation, kind of a preview of the rest of the season. Please don't get angry about it. It's not worth it. If you start typing and you find yourself getting angry, just stop, okay? It's not worth it. I'm not worth it. We're on the internet talking about football. Think about your family. Think about your life. Don't get angry, okay? And also, don't add conspiracies. I promise you, from the bottom of my heart, I'm telling you the truth. This is genuinely where I think these teams will finish, yeah? If you are particularly emotional about your team, what you will do is you will project your emotion onto me and add a conspiracy that says, Ben wants my team to fail. Wrong. No, I don't. Ben's biased towards that team because he gets a big following from them on YouTube or because he particularly wants them to succeed. You're wrong. I promise I'm being genuine. This is where, right now, I think those teams will finish. And... Nine times out of ten, when people attribute emotions to my predictions, they're actually projecting their own emotions about football onto me. Don't do it. I'm telling you the truth. Um, we need multivariant analysis, yeah? You can comment about one team, which, let's be fair, 90% of football fans do, the team they support, but that doesn't work in this context. Because if you have so-and-so outside the relegation zone... You need to tell me which three teams are in the relegation zone. So as much as it's fine to look at football through the prism of the team you support, I get it. We all do that. In this instance, for this exercise, and that's what it is, a little exercise, a little bit of fun, doesn't work. I need multivariant analysis. If one team moves, if the butterfly flaps his wings, another team also has to move. Which leads to the last point down there. Have a try yourself. The obvious end to all conversations in the comments on these videos is, okay, what's your 1 to 24? We can have a lovely debate about mine and my positions, but the final question I'm going to end every sentence is, okay, where would you have them then? Or, okay, you're not putting them down. Who are you putting down? And the answer to all of those questions, so I don't need to ask them, is what is your 1 to 24? There you go. A little bit of a rant, but the comments get very out of hand on these and very emotional. And um, free, free speech, you can put emotional out of hand comments, but the consequence is it will irritate me, okay? Free speech has a consequence, we know that. 
Um, so do get involved in the comments, but try and help us out. And I think we'll have a really good debate if you can try and do those things as much as is possible. And I will link up here now. I'll cover up my teacher-like instructions and put the pre-season 1 to 24 edition and the September international break edition as well. Let it burn. Get in the comments the updated 1 to 24 predictions.